Welcome back to Poison Touch Advice Hour. I'm your host, Jake. And as you know, it's the second episode of the month. So we are reading some Reddit stories. Now, I know normally it is an am I the asshole moment where we do stories deciding who's the asshole in the situation. That being said, a story came across my desk the other day. And by desk, I mean my TikTok feed. (laughs) A story came across my desk. That I could not, I could not ignore. It was about two young men, one of whom realizes he might be in love with his best friend, before even realizing that he himself might be gay. And then an update to said question. So I'm joined once again by John. Hello, John. How you doing? I'm John. I'm good. How are you? Good. I'm feeling great. It's a uh, a new day. It is a new recording. Yeah, long time. Long time. It's been a long time since we recorded the last episode. How you, how you feeling since the first one? I've been good. Thanks for having me back. Good, you know. Appreciate it. Uh, I see you every day, so we don't really have any updates. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I see you every day, so. Uh, but updates for y'all, you know. Lots of shit coming forward. Very excited for the next couple of months. Um, as everyone knows, I, I schedule these really far in advance. So I am just so excited for the guests that I have not just this month. I was really excited to have you on, but and the guests that I have lined up for the the next coming months, I'm very excited. I've been trying to like not just do people that I find my friends because I think that's cool, but I also want to do people who have things to promote, people whose communities I think you know don't have a lot of overlap with mine, and therefore cross promo would be important. Things like that, that's important good. shit. So I am excited for things coming up. So I'm pretty impressed with how far out you. You have things planned and I haven't planned till February. That's good. Uh, yeah, I know. So I was I've been asking you for like a couple months. I was like, when am I wait, when am I going on again? <laughs> I can tell you I was <laughs> when like am I going on? <laughs> for the anniversary for, for July. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. Yep. 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 yep, yep, yep. yep, yep, yep. Which coincidentally is also the anniversary of this podcast. Oh. Huh. Technically. So the f- here it's different. It's weird. So the first episode that I ever recorded knowing that I was gonna do a podcast, that's different. But Okay. Because you know I've been doing these for like a couple of years now. Mm, yeah, 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 yeah. And then I stopped when I moved to Chicago, and then I started doing them again. So mm-hmm. I was doing them during the pandemic a lot, yeah, like every month. And I took a break, and then a while back I came back and started doing them again. That being said, the first one from the backlog. So really, what would be episode two? Mm-hmm. Um, was the July episode? It was the one with Ivan, or not? I, yeah, the one with Ivan. Mm-hmm. So he was my first co-host. Yeah. So he was the first one that was on uh, the pod. So basically, in, in an essence, it is... Two anniversary. It is an anniversary. Mm-hmm. Very good. And um, black one on July. Yeah, July is a busy month. <clears throat> good job. Let's just dive right in. That's it. We got a lot to cover. We have a lot of ground to cover. These poor gay fools. This story is titled... Exclamation point, exclamation point, exclamation point. Am I gay for my best mate? Uh-oh. Question mark, question mark, question mark. How do you tell the difference between platonic and romantic feelings? And that's where the bulk of the advice is going to come through, yeah. right? So it starts off. I, a 20-year-old male, have been friends with another male, also 20, since we were 12. We've basically done everything together. Our siblings and our parents being friends too has made it so easy. Our families holiday together. We all go out to dinner at least once a month. They don't mind us staying over at at each other's houses unannounced, even when we were in school. I've never really suspected that he might be interested in men or that I might be for that matter. We've both had girlfriends in the past and it's just not just not something that's come up. But a week or two ago, my stepdad made this comment about M being gay for me. I didn't think much of it. I just thought he was being a dick and complained to a friend about it. This friend asked why my stepdad thought that, and I mentioned that M had bought me flowers, as a joke, for graduation, and he hasn't gotten over it. The friend joked that it was kinda gay, and honestly, everything's been kinda crumbling around me, LMAO. It's not that I care that he's gay, I just found that I'm aware that that's an actual option. Not just for him, but for me. I didn't really think too much about considering myself until this morning. It's completely taken over my head. How do you even tell the difference between being fond of someone and being romantically interested in them? He had stayed the night last night and this morning I woke up cuddled up to him. He was still asleep and it was really nice and I found myself smiling about it and then it kind of hit me that maybe I am gay for him. What questions do I even ask myself to work this out? I've thought about what kissing him would be like and honestly, it's not a thought that I'm scared of. 
Not something I'm craving to do, but not something I don't want to do, if that makes sense. Is that normal? I've never even liked, I've never liked his girlfriends and I'm starting to think maybe I was biased. And honestly, my last girlfriend broke up with me because I spend too much time with him. I really don't know what I'd do without him. I notice all the little things he does for me and make mental notes when I learn new things about him. I like all the things that he likes because I love the way he talks about them. Like I hate football, but I like the way that he's, in, the, I like the way he enjoys it. And sometimes I look at him and I feel this weird feeling of love and content, but not in a butterfly's way. That feeling doesn't make me nervous, not until now at least. He's obviously important to me, so I didn't think this meant I might be gay for him. We are going on a trip to Bali on Monday, just us two, our first time traveling alone, so please, please help me out. Okay. There's a lot of information in here. There's a lot. We're going to start with the most fast. obvious thing. To me, <laughs> Bali is a destination for honeymoons. Why are you and your best friend going on a honeymoon destination? Why did you choose that out of anywhere else in the world? You could have gone anywhere <laughs> else. And the two I don't of you like that, but necessarily Bali that location. But go ahead, go ahead. Bali is just such a big like honeymoon location, though. It's always you think about like those little uh, like the the cabanas like in the water, sure. those like huts, mm -hmm. you know, and they're, they're like fanned out in a circle. And then, you know, you wake up and you're in like a, a white linen shirt and pants and you stretch <laughs> out and then the two of you kiss and there's flowers on the bed and, and then you go on an excursion and you, you know, yeah. swim with fishes and make passionate love to each that's, other. In the that's also people's idea of, 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 of Paris, even though I have no desire for Paris, but if they were going to Paris too, you could say the same thing. And it's just, I guess. But anyways, I guess. I, well, I, I, maybe I think about it differently because when I was in Paris, we were a drunk mess the entire time. Yeah, I don't know. We partied in Paris. Paris was, yeah. Paris was fun. I think about when I'm thinking of this place. Like Bali is a good, cheap place to travel to. So if is they're it younger, cheap? Yeah. is it really? Uh, probably not to get there, but once okay. you're there, it's not going to be that expensive for gotcha. accommodations for food. Uh, depending on, you can get expensive depending on where you want. It sounds stay, like but... they are in Europe. What do you mean? He said he said he's best mate. And we holiday together. <laughs> you know, I, this is, it's, it's giving Europe. That's fair. That's fair. So maybe it's just cheaper for, you know, because less ground to cover from Europe to Bali. Perhaps. Perhaps. Or, I mean, maybe from LA to Bali would be quicker. I don't know. Yeah. Because when I was living in LA, it was easier for me to get to Asia from West Coast out here. Those prices are Shit. much different. So we got anyway. We got to go to LA and then to Asia. Sure. Okay, cool. Or LA and then to Australia. That's like a 13 hour flight. That's crazy. We're so yes. off topic. Okay. And <laughs> the first thing I started thinking about was bugs. Uh, the, <laughs> all, all those enormous ass creatures out there that are just out to kill you. I don't know how those Australians do it. It's so funny just the things they post. My it's thought just, was how there's this little like flea that's like the size of a guinea pig. It's like, what the fuck is out there? So we'll bring Fubu. He'd probably kick all their asses. Probably. I, I feel safe with Fubu. One thing my little man does not, you know, let get in his way is a bug or another animal. He or will anything, bully anything. a grown ass dog. A moth flew into his cage the other day. Fuck that. He stared it down. It was in his <laughs> hay thing. It, it was in his hay thing. And you should have seen the way he started swinging the hay thing around. <laughs> which that moth was he scared. Yeah. So the moth flew get out. out. My house. The moth flew out. And that's when I killed it. No. Oh. It was a team effort. I felt like for the first time, me and my rat had like, we finally saw each other, you know? Nice. I was like, we're a team. That's my son. <laughs> for the first time. This is our house. <laughs> Literally, you don't pay right here. Get the fuck out of house. Okay. Right, but anyways, back, back, to, back to these homosexuals. This is, I think, not, not like hard for us to consider, but like the two of us are both people that knew we were gay pretty early on. Yeah. So it's just an experience that we don't really have. I think I think it's really cute, actually. And I've met people who have also gone through this experience of having absolutely no clue um, and not having anything against it. They're just like, wow, I didn't like he said, I didn't even think that was an option. Like, I just didn't think about being attracted to anyone of the same sex or really anybody else. They're just like, whoa, I suddenly have feelings for this person, whether it's yeah. a guy or a girl. But I, I, just I like, it's so I cute that it way. just took like one person to be like, oh, wait, sure. Sure. And I, I almost think like, I don't know, it's it's kind of, this could be like a movie because I feel like they could, they could go to this 
trip out in Bali and have this beautiful little romantic thing and then come to realize, you know what? I just really love you. And, you know, you've been my friend since whenever. And I don't think I want to pursue anything, you know, mm -hmm. from a romantic standpoint. I think this is it. This is the one and done. We did all this stuff out here. Let's yeah, like leave it there. The and then it's out up. there. Yeah. Get it out there and let it be. Or maybe, yeah, maybe it is the beginning of. Like I, I feel like I've something. seen this movie. Probably. And then someone died at the end, right? No. Yeah. It kind of reminds me of that Australian movie we saw. Where like they at had the theater not song. Yeah, they like had this one like of so this movie. It's an Australian. It's a gay Australian film. It's called Of an Age. John and I went to go see it in theaters a couple months ago, uh, and it reminds me of this story. It's about this guy who knows he's gay but doesn't know anyone else who's gay. So it's a little different. But that he has ended up having this like really romantic evening with a man before. Um, before he moves away, mm -hmm. like literally the next day. So they just have this one night. They get all these feelings out. They have like this really strong emotional connection. And they just like get it all out yeah. kind of in that one night. There's a time skip. I'm not going to tell you what happens because you really should go watch it because I, I really did like the movie. Aside from the ending. Yeah. The ending I wasn't too fond of, but the rest of the movie I like really liked. I didn't hate the ending. I just think that. No, I'm not gonna say it. It was very abrupt. It just ended <laughs> That's very what I was abruptly. gonna say. That's exactly what I was gonna say. I just didn't want to say it because That's not a spoiler. It just ends very abrupt. All right. I won't say anything. More. <laughs> I'm not gonna say anything else. But you should go watch it. Go go watch it's, the film if you have access. Yeah, yeah, it's it's worth a watch. It's but worth, it's it, a good coming of age story. We've probably all been through some sort of experience like that at some point where I mean, you have a strong the, connection with someone yeah. and then whether it works or doesn't doesn't matter and that's not giving anything away in the movie but it's just like sometimes those like we've brief all had that brief strong moments of romance like, can just be so strong especially when you're younger yeah which i feel like is what like, the two of them are 20 right so these are like young people so like they're still coming into their own as as romantic beings you know what i mean mm -hmm. so i think that's why it, it reminded me so much of it because this is this is a coming age story yeah it is and i feel like i don't know I think it's, again, I think it's cute. I think it's a very natural story. It didn't seem like anything here was outside of the norm. And maybe just being older, I'm just like, oh, like we kind of all go through that, don't we? At some point in our life and they just happen to uh, to write about it and they're yeah. going through it. And then I'm sure this trip to Bali is like a huge I thing know. to them. It's like whether daunting is a word I'm thinking of, but not in a bad way. Just like, oh my God, this is like a big, well, I think it's, a big it's deal more daunting for him so than the other friend. For probably, sure. Because now he's having all these feelings and uh, to our knowledge, the other one isn't thinking all of this. Yeah. And uh, none of them have confirmed that they're gay or not. So this is just them, him coming to terms with the realization that, you know, his sexuality could be something other than just hetero. And this could be, the place where they explore because yes. it's just them two and what that means thing. to him and his best friend yeah you know i relate to it my yeah, my, my first boyfriend was my best friend mm -hmm. but yeah. it was different because i had come out to him then he came out to me we were like we were the only other gay person that we know we we're like should we start dating <laughs> <laughs> so are we doing this <laughs> and we, we dated for like six months and they were like this is not for us yeah then we broke up but we were still really good friends so, you know, even if they like have this thing together and then they realize it's just not for them, they go back to being friends. They've been friends since they were 12. Yeah, so that's what I, was I, I don't think it would really like... change much between them, you know? Yeah. But I think this is, it's just, it's such a, you're right. It's like cute. It's such a lovely place to be in. Mm -hmm. that, like that young, that wonderment with just life and be like, this, this is an option. Like just seeing like different ways of being for yourself. I really appreciate too, especially, you know, I talked about earlier my upbringing where my entire life not we earlier just, in the other episode oh, which yeah, was filmed episode. on another day yeah a long time ago uh, <laughs> 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 it seems like this person the idea of being gay isn't something that like they need to feel bad about like they don't feel they're not here saying oh my god i'm a piece of shit i'm this or that what will this person what will my family think about yes. me or they're just like oh i didn't realize that i could I love that, that I thought this way exactly. and I'm open to explore that. And I mean, it seems like they're in a safe place where they can do that. Yeah. So I like, I don't know. It just seems like a really, I'm rooting for both of them. <laughs> I really so. like that. It, the question of this isn't, I think I'm gay. What do I do? And then yeah. like dealing with internalized homophobia or feelings of like, am I wrong for this? I or, hate myself. Yeah. I'm depressed. Like I, or that, which happens. It, it happens. And usually, those, you know, those stories are important. Yeah. 
and it's important that we tackle those and and i think the biggest way to tackle that is to keep talking about what it means to be queer and what it means to grow up and really show people that there are different ways of being other than what is shown in every popular media mm. so even if that's like you know the the two what was it, aqualad and young justice kissing kissing a man you know what mm. i mean like just things that show people oh that is an option because as we see here it did it didn't even occur to him exactly that that could have been an option for him right. so if you don't see it how do you know you can be it mm -hmm. you know and so i think that's not just in the scope of this story but in the scope of like you know, society writ large it's just so important that we show the youth that it's okay. There's nothing wrong with them for feeling this way. Yeah. I think that's why this this platform is great because you're talking about all the different stories that we that people yeah. out there not that have, I would ever recommend this to a child. <laughs> <laughs> no child should be listening to this. <laughs> if you are like under seventeen and you're listening to this podcast, um, thank you for listening. Log off. But also. And go do back. your math homework <laughs> do your math homework come back when you're 18 yes i agree <laughs> but anyways yeah it's 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 good to hear stories like this what, and all different types of stories because we're what all would going you say something to someone who asked you this question because the, the the real question with this is how do you discern platonic feelings from romantic feelings what would you say to someone a young person who is having trouble with that? I would say, I think, I think the big thing is, okay, so this person, this friend, their friend, they clearly care about them and they've known them for a long time since they were what, 12. Um, I would kind of get their, their thought on, I guess being gay, the idea of that, and maybe bring up, Hey, someone mentioned this the other day and I never even thought that that could be an option. That's not admitting to you being gay or that, you know, saying that they are anything like that. Yeah. I never even thought that that would be an option. What's your thought on that? And just kind of like talk to that other person about it. Um, hopefully, I would hope that that person who, you know, they've grown up with all this time uh, would be receptive, receptive to it and non-judgmental about it. Um, Which it sounds like how they have they that they relationship. Know? I think it they sounds do like they, they have like a very no, no judgment, at least between the two of them. Yeah. I think so, too. But once you kind of get that answer from them, you could say, OK. Maybe that other person's like, no, 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 okay, I'm not at all. I, I don't have that uh, th that desire. I'm not interested. Well, then, boom, there's your answer. You don't have to pursue this person anymore. Or you don't have to be, like, riddled with the thought of, oh, what could that be? What could that be? What could that be? Yeah. Um, and then, and then or, you're left reading into every little thing that they do. Exactly. And, oh and, and on this trip, you're just uncomfortable because you're like, oh, my God. Like, do they like me? Do they not? Like, just kind of put it out there and see what they say. And if they say they're, you know, I... Don't think of you in that way. I'm not interested. Okay, fine. Ooh, Let's just easy. enjoy our vacation. Or if they say, you know what? I've been kind of thinking the same way. Then now there's a space or platform for you to talk about what it would be like to explore further. Yeah. And definitely, I like, we're not saying jump in the deep end. We're not saying no, boom, no. holes and poles everywhere. Like this but is just, like, just talk conversations. About just talk about it. Yeah. That's, yeah. I think that's where you have to start with everything. Just, it is hard. It's not an easy thing to do. To have those tougher conversations. But I think I think if I was giving someone advice, that's what I would say. Really care about this person. You feel like you can trust them. Don't accuse them of being any which way, but just say, hey, this idea that I never that never even occurred to me has been presented. And I just want to know your advice, your 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 feedback, your thoughts on it. Mm -hmm. What do you think about this? Yeah. Because I never thought about it. What do you think? And then just go from there. And I wanna like if we're widening it of the scope of this, just like advice kind of at large in terms of discerning platonic feelings from romantic feelings because this is something that i wouldn't even prescribe an age to because i know people yeah. of multiple ages yeah. that have trouble discerning the two you know Absolutely. so i think if, if you're somebody who feels like you struggle with that first off there's nothing wrong with that i think there are bits of romantic love in platonic love there's tons of platonic love sure. in romantic love mm -hmm. it's all especially with queer relationships um the lines are always very blurred it can be very tough you know um and i would just you know the important thing for me when coming between these things is take your time with it don't feel like you need to rush into anything don't feel like mm -hmm. if you have a crush on someone crushes can come and go 
Mm-hmm. You can meet someone and, you know, you're like, oh, my God, I have such a crush on them. And, but you, like, really just want to be really good friends with them. But, like, right. but you just enjoy that person's energy and their personality and you want to be around them all the time and stuff. Yeah. And that crush will fade and you'll be like, you know what, I, this, is, this is my friend, this is my sister, exactly. you know, like I love her. And also, please don't confuse sex with love either. Yeah. I, that. I mean, that's a whole other conversation. <laughs> that's a whole, that's a whole, I was just saying, if it does go there, don't confuse sex with love. <laughs> yeah. I, that can it, all be part, you know, that's part of it. But man, some people hook up and they're just in love. And it's like, uh, can you stop calling me, please? Yeah. Because that was a one time deal. But you can also <laughs> have sex and then, you know, you can be friends and you can still be friends and have sex. Or you can have exactly. sex once and then be like, actually, I just want to keep it platonic. And then yeah. you just stay as friends. Right. There can be like, like, and I think this is something that and I wouldn't say uniquely, but it's definitely more common in queer friendships and relationships more so than that we hook up first and then become friends after kind of (laughs) more so amongst us than the straights right yeah probably they have because the straight they have a whole complex where like you can't even be friends with someone of the opposite sex you know mm, yeah well i I think from those that i've known it's like that until they start like dating someone else and then that other person has to go. Yeah. Like you, and I think that's you also. You can't have a friend, you know, the opposite yeah. sex. And, oh, oh, wait, you guys messed around. Now it's even more of a strain in our relationship. So Meanwhile, for us, it's like, well, I mean, you know, all of our friends were. Everyone, they've all, either they've we've all fucked up or we're all guys. So it's not like, you know, yeah. it's not the. There's a whole bunch of. And I think that is, that's also just so liberating, I think, for for us as queer people to not have to prescribe to like, Oh, you can't have any other friends of the opposite sex. Cause mm-hmm. you might be attracted to them. Cause you know, I, God like, forbid you already did mess around. With right. Them, cause, Cause like, Oh, you could be attracted to multiple people. Even when you're dating somebody, you know, what? Are, like, there's just so many different options for it, but I feel like we've completely just gone off point, but no, not exactly. But it all relates. We could, <laughs> I just think there are so many things that go into the many different types of love, both familial, platonic, relationship, romantic, all relationships. There's uh, the lines, like I said earlier, are really blurred. So don't you're not wrong for not being able to have trouble like discerning them. Yeah. And I think, again, that's kind of why to take it back to this. It's like that's why the conversation is the most important. Thing. Like that, that, It's where it all starts. Or even and before that, about this guy. Just talking to yourself, most importantly, like, and let yourself have crushes. Crushes, I think, are great. Yeah. I love a crush. Mm-hmm. When I lived in New York, I had a different crush every day on the subway. I was like, oh, that's my subway crush <laughs> for the day. But like, let yourself have crushes because they come and they go and they, you, you can fall really hard for someone in a, spe- in a matter of hours. Mm-hmm. And yeah. what it seems like here, he's realizing he has a crush on his best friend. Right. So even before he has that conversation where he talks about all that, I think it's important to let himself stir in that crush figure out what it means for him and whether that means that he wants more. Cause he said he's not like opposed to kissing yeah. him. Right. But it's not something that he's craving to do. Does that mean he's just feeling the crush and he's like, wow, this is someone that I really, really love. Like I've right. been with, you know, we've been with each other since we were 12, you know, or, and he's just now reaching it like, Oh, I have a crush on him. And does it go somewhere or not? And that's what our conversation is. Or maybe another piece of advice for this person would be uh, if if you don't feel ready to talk to your friend about that, do you have another friend who you feel safe talking to? It sounds like, like it because hey, they, they had the friend when the when the stepdad made the joke. Yeah. They yeah. talked to them about it. That's what I'm saying. Like another friend who you could be like, hey, so I never even thought about this until this is brought up. And I don't want to talk about this to the, you know, the friend who I have the crush on. Like, am I gay? Am I gay? Do you know anybody who's gone through this? Like Here's this? the real advice. You're going to go on BuzzFeed. You're going to go on BuzzFeed.com. You're going to type in Am I Gay quiz. And you're going to take... It sounds like a terrible idea. You're going to take that quiz. <laughs> if the quiz tells you you're gay. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but in all honesty, does this, this also doesn't even mean that you're gay. It doesn't. I think you the story's going to end it, up with them not being gay. It could be that you're, you're bi. It could be that you are just yeah. have romantic feelings for this one man and mm-hmm. then no other man ever in your life that you mm-hmm. come across. Mm-hmm. And if you could end up dating this guy, break up and realize, you know, I think I'm good on men. Yeah. I think I'll just go it back to fun. women. I did it. You know, it was a time. Didn't hate it. What did I do it again? Maybe not. Maybe. I don't know. Exactly. There's Which, so many different ways you can go. So we could just keep rambling. Which I think might be the 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 plot to that Pedro Pascal Ethan Hawke movie. 
Like, I think they had, like, a tryst when they were, like, kids. When they were, like, you know, in their youth. And now they're, like, old and hardened and grizzled. And I think they're, like, they're not as gay as they were. I'm just so excited so. to watch it. I don't know. I'm, I'm, so yeah, I'm not thinking a lot about it. Mm. <sighs> I can't wait. No, no. Gay cowboys. Because they're, they're not going to take the... It's not going to be Brokeback Mountain style. Because no. it would just be the same story. Yeah. So, like, it's got to have something different to it. Because yeah. they'll end up just being like, you know what? This isn't working out. And, I think uh, it might be, like, closer to, like, a Moonlight situation. Okay. You know? Where, like... They had that moment in their youth, yeah. and now they're all grown up, and they might share another tender moment between each other, but I don't think they're going to end up together. Yeah. Which, you know, and that's another thing. Like, if, if this is you in that story, and you don't end up with him, that's not a failure on either of your part. That's no, by no means. You, you learned some things about yourself. You tried yeah. some things out, and you it's, it's all part of your journey on life. It was a time, and let it be what it was. You learn things. Yeah. And definitely don't look bad on it, you know. Yeah. In the future. Just it was it was nice, it was what it was, and let it be that. Let it continue to be that. Of course. And don't hurt yourself or judge yourself oh, or, God, or go no. down on your, yourself. Which like it that. doesn't sound like they're doing. They, I don't they, think they so sound at all, very we'll open wanna, yeah. to it. I think they're in a great place. This is a great movie. We should <laughs> Which the next story we're gonna read is the update, which I've read. I know oh, what I happens. don't know about this update. You don't. I don't. So you're gonna be getting first first uh first experiences of what Mm -hmm. happens next but first okay let's take a break all right let's take a break hi gay people and i guess non-gay people do you have something to remote are you baking cakes for people are you in charge of a newsletter do you have your own podcast hit me up slide into my dms and let's try to figure out some way to promote your stuff let's help each other out all right let's get back to the show and we're back. Was this is a lovely break. It was. It was good. Very Again, refreshing. I'm refreshed. I'm okay. ready. I'm ready for the update. I'm ready for the update. I'm, I'm ready. actually really curious because we talked about this even before. Yeah, we talked about it off air, which is how it ended up on the podcast because yeah. I had sent this to you. I thought it was cute. And I'm like, oh, that's nice. Because it crossed um, my desk, as I, I said. Didn't, yes. My, uh, was, my illustrious desk. desk. And then I, I placed I it on your update. desk. Mm-hmm. And so you had only heard that part of the story. Yeah. The update he just posted on TikTok. Okay. So that came across my desk as well, which is that when I had the idea, I was like, oh, I should just do both of these stories for the pod. Yeah. <clears throat> so yeah. here's the update. Hi there. I wanted to thank everyone on my last post for helping me out. There was a lot of mixed suggestions, but most were really helpful. He's talking about our advice. Mm-hmm. Our advice was helpful. Yeah. I got back from Bali this morning and it was oh, insane. The that. whole trip was out of some movie. I worked out pretty quick that I definitely have feelings for him. Everything we did, every meal, every activity felt like a date in my head. I've had countless amounts of dinners with this guy, then a thousand things alone with him, but this all felt different. I was hyper aware of everything. He kicked me under the table the first night at dinner and I was thinking, did we always do that before? That was kind of how I felt about everything. There's always been a running joke from high school that we were dating. Like I mentioned in my last post, he had gotten me flowers for graduation as a joke. Every now and again, we would do this really stupid and overly romantic thing for each other for a laugh. That led to him paying the Airbnb host to shower my bedroom in flower petals and hearts in this bouquet. That kicked off a running joke that we were on our honeymoon. Yeah, I tell you, Molly's mm-hmm. a honeymoon destination. We kept doing these stupid little things for each other and jokingly calling each other the dumbest, most atrocious pet names you've ever heard. It wasn't until the last few days that anything really happened. We went to this really pretty place for dinner. The vibe was really different all of a sudden. I wasn't fixating on these feelings I was having for him. It was a really romantic restaurant. We were sat over this insane view and watched the sunset and having a nice candle at dinner, but neither of us made any jokes about our honeymoon, quote unquote. We just ate and really enjoyed ourselves and stayed in the moment. There was a bit of a moment when we got back to the villa, but things turned awkward pretty quickly for the next day. After that, we decided to talk it out. He admitted to having a crush on me in year nine. See, I told you they're British. Year nine. (laughs) In year nine. Just say freshman. And he figured that he was into guys that way. I brought up that a couple more times and he asked why I kept talking about it and I told him about my feelings for him, which he reciprocated. And we kissed and stuff. And stuff. 
So yeah, that's kind of it for now. He's gone to visit some family in another state, so we decided we'd work out more stuff when he's back. But it's all looking good. Thanks so much to everyone who helped out. I really appreciate it, and thanks for reading. And then, in the comments of this, he gave an update to the update. Okay. They're dating. Cute. They're dating. That's so cute. That's cute. So, being that this is your first time hearing all this information, mm -hmm. thoughts? I mean, obviously, I'm glad it's... Uh working out for them and they're all excited my thought i, I feel like i'm such a cynic because you thought they weren't gonna end up together <laughs> i did but my my first thought is because you know how long i take for everything when he's like oh my god it's been so like this trip was great i'm like how long was this trip was it a week after one week they're already falling in love and <laughs> mm -hmm. was, i'm such a cynic they've been I'm slowly glad it's working falling out. in love since they were 12 since they were 12 i know i know but i just feel like i don't know people jump into things really quickly and fall out of things really quickly. Yeah. So I'm just being a cynic. But I'm glad it's all worked out. <laughs> it's a very cute story. I like um, that it turned out that the other that one. That first paragraph. That's when I was like, how long oh, is this trip? Of course. Of course. I'm sure it was not super long. They're like, they're kids. Who has money for all that? I'm glad they talked, you know, talked it out too. And that's what I said initially. Like, you just got to talk it out and see, see where the other did, person is Which is why when at. you were saying it, I was like. I like, mm, good. At <laughs> mm, talk it out. I do. Um. I like that the other friend was like, oh, yeah, I had known I've been into guys for a little bit now because he told him he had a crush on him in, in year nine. And that's when he figured out he was into guys. Yeah. So it looks like he has already kind of been on that little journey sure. with himself and coming to terms with that. Mm. And then, you know, it, it, he was just waiting for yo ass to catch up. It's cute, too, because maybe since he has been on that journey, he's been trying to maybe respectfully, but in subtly. That's put, the thing. Put out little hints like the flowers. Yeah. Not being intrusive, not yeah. trying to push it. Not pulling like a James Charles and like leering on his straight friend or whatever. Yeah, but like let's just, just being like, this is I someone like I care about. And I'm just going to get him flowers. Like very subtle ways to to show his appreciation for you. Um, yeah, that's cute. And you know, it, it, it kind of worked out. Seems so I also out. think it's just so wild that it all kind of stemmed from his stepdad being like, he's gay for you. Like, it took your stepdad making an offhand comment <laughs> for you to be like, wait a second. Is he? <laughs> Even with the running gag, a running gag that they were dating. Oh, yeah. They've had that running joke since high school that they were dating. That they were dating. Yeah. And it took his stepdad to be like, that why are you gay? gay? For you? Why are you gay? <laughs> I'm here with your friend. Why are you gay? It's cute. Well, I'm glad it worked out for them because it, uh, it was a cute story from the get go. I, it's it's nice the way it uh, just kind of naturally unfolded too, with no <clears throat> no like finger pointing or or you know. I mean, there was a, there was a bit of or, awkwardness. They said they had that moment. Well, no, that's and, quick and easy. I'm just saying, like from their past. Oh, I know. Like they were able to naturally fall into this without being, from what it seems like, they weren't ridiculed or had really any trouble naturally yeah. moving into this. So. So this was nine months ago. And then the update in the other one was... I wonder how long they're going to give updates for. <laughs> well, this was also nine months ago. So I guess, it, I guess, I don't know if we've had anything other than the nine months. Okay, so they said, um, I wanted to hijack the comments for another mini update. We are officially dating as of two hours ago. Thanks, everyone, for the nice comments. I'm glad. <laughs> he couldn't Listen. wait. He was he like, I can't wait to tell the internet. <laughs> I have to tell the internet. That's hilarious. Well, that's why I say. I, I wonder how long they're going to be updating for, because I feel like a lot of people would like to continue following oh, this story. For just to see sure. how long it goes or doesn't, whatever. But I need an update. It's been, it's been nine months. Where are y'all at? Right. Um, thanks everyone for the nice comments. I'm glad so many people enjoyed our story. Thinking way ahead, but I'm keeping these posts a secret in case we ever get married so I can read them out one day. Maybe. Oh, so he didn't tell him he made them. Oh, oh, my heart, my soul. <laughs> oh, that's so cute. Could you imagine? That's very cute. That's adorable. Oh, my God. Oh, <sighs> we're rooting for them. That's so precious. <laughs> All the other wow. comments are like, dude, I know, that's what I you've been dating <laughs> for eight years. <laughs> I just died of cuteness. They've been that's together cute. since they were 12. That is one of those rare kind of stories. And I, if, if you're reading this and you're like dying, not in a good way, you're like, uh, it's, it should have been me, not him. Like, I hate them. I want that. 
just know love comes in all forms and it's not always as clear and and it wasn't even clear in this story but it's not always so quick as things happen here and just know that like if you're having problems finding someone for you um if you're hearing the two of us talk you're like i fucking hate these two faggots (laughs) (laughs) you know it, it it took us you know i was single for years before i met him and I was enjoying being single. And when I met him, I wasn't even looking no, same. for I, anything. I was single for over a decade and enjoying it. I mean, See? of course, still like hoping one day, but definitely not looking for anything. Yeah. Not at all. And so I think oh, just some final advice, not for anyone involved in this story, but for people who might think that they're, you know, lucking out in love. Is that, is that, what, is that the phrase? Sure. Sure. You know, like they're just not it's just not happening for them just because it's not happening for you now doesn't mean it's never going to happen for you it doesn't mean that you need somebody to make you complete you know you should find someone to compliment you not complete you yeah Um, if you're going to be with anybody make sure that they are adding value to your life and that you're able to add value to theirs too it's not just all about you but um it's a two-way street yeah that they are really adding value that they are even just patient with you because I feel like we're all growing. We're all, that's one thing I really do appreciate about you is that like you're uh you're, you're just patient. Let's say that <laughs> you're patient. Thanks. Um, yeah, I don't know. It's just, and I, I find it funny too, is I've always heard people say, Oh, I've been looking for someone looking for someone looking for it. And the moment I stop, that's when it happened. Yep. And that's, I mean, I hadn't been looking for like a good 10 years. <laughs> I know, I, but I hadn't been looking for a long time. Yeah, I hadn't so. been looking for a while, but then it's like, I don't know. I just really, I think around the time that, oh yeah, because around the time that we had met up, <clears throat> I had just been off all of the apps. So the, you know, the grinder, the scruff, the this or that, whatever. And I'd been off for a couple the months, sniffies, several months. The Adam for Adam. All of that. The, the Craigslist. <laughs> I was off for, Yeah. <laughs> For a couple months because I was just I was just bored and over it. I was like, you know what? I really don't give a shit. I I, I just hope I'll eventually meet someone. Just you know, face to face. And then that you know this ended up happening. And even when we met, I was like, okay, cool, whatever. He's cute. He's fun to talk to. Cool, fine, whatever. I, it is what it is. Yeah, that's what I was. And like, then it just slowly developed. If it goes somewhere, it goes so. somewhere. If it doesn't, it doesn't. I was like very just open to whatever. Yeah. Because yeah, I wasn't. I think another thing that. Um, just don't push people don't struggle push with things because yeah, then don't. it just pushes back and it doesn't doesn't always end well or yeah. it just becomes difficult mm-hmm. let's say that things yeah. will be difficult and I think it's you know part of it is learning to be so comfortable with yourself when you're single that like keep on you could be like I, all I need is me mm-hmm. and if I, if I like you said like if, if I want somebody they gotta be additive to my life because if, if you if you make a fool out of me, I don't need you because I'm going to be good by myself. Because mm-hmm. I'm going to always be good, no matter what. And I, I would say, too, like, additive in not such a way where there's a lot of, like, too much effort or compromise on either. Just let it be a natural. Like, nat- this person is naturally adding to your life yeah. because... I mean, obviously, like, arguments happen. Oh, of course, yeah. Disagreements happen. Yeah. That's just natural. But, you know, you shouldn't be constantly which fighting. like these guys i feel like it just naturally happened for them it did they just naturally fell into this whole thing and here they are now dating and updating us two two hours later <laughs> yeah i'm waiting on that nine month update i hope they're still together i hope so i hope so but yeah for for those of you that are single and, and you know feeling like you're losing in love just know uh, it could happen and even if it doesn't happen you're not any less of a person for not being in a relationship i think also even for those who let's say have been in a relationship maybe someone went through exactly this and they are no longer i feel like i know some people might not like this but i feel like leaving a relationship leaving a marriage leaving whatever that's not bad either and i feel like people can really put themselves down sometimes like oh 
love is it's just not for me. I tried, blah blah blah, it didn't work out. I mean, it's like I said and earlier, it's, like, it's look, not a we failure. Are all, it's not a failure. We are all on our own journeys, and we're all growing. And if whether someone is or isn't growing with you, or they're just growing in a different direction, mm-hmm. that is all good and okay. And just let that be as well. Yeah, which we had a, a question about that last month in regards to friendships growing in different directions that which we, we talked about there yeah which is another form of love absolutely and there you know you can totally grow in other directions but it, it can be hard to leave a good friend too it can it can be very hard and I, i've done it and it can be hard to leave a relationship but that just because a relationship doesn't work out i just want to reiterate this i know i've said it a couple times over the course of this episode and last episode but leaving a relationship or just because a relationship doesn't work out is not a failure on either part. Yeah, by no means. By no means. It's just continued growth, I think. Just, yeah. Next chapter. It's, all, it's not that easy, but... It's all information. And you mm-hmm. can use that information to grow, take that with you, and how you, you know, deal with love going forward, deal with friends going forward. And also, if someone does you dirty, I think it's also important not to internalize yourself as not being worthy of love like if someone is is really like doing you down in the dirt and you finally get out of it you're still worthy of love like don't internalize whatever bullshit someone dragged you through yeah because it has nothing to do with them it has everything to do with that per- that person being a dirty person yeah it has nothing to do with you it has everything yeah, to do with them exactly well, we can talk about all the different facets of love for truly hours so because we're such experts right i know we're just <laughs> such experts I was like, we were what do single, I know? We were single for years. Exactly. <laughs> we're That's what everyone's experts. Say. Shut up. You were single for 10 years. <laughs> experts in being what single. Know? Hell yeah. And I totally. loved it. I was I was fine alone, but I'm great with you. Aw, how cute. <laughs> Thanks for being on the episode again. Yeah. Thank you. It was fun. No problems. I had a good time. No, I don't like to talk too much, but this was a good time. I enjoyed uh the topics, the conversation, the advice given. And uh, yeah, I'm exhausted now. I'm going to go to sleep because this is too much talking oh, for me. <laughs> oh, poor thing. We're about to cook dinner. Yeah. All right, friends. Thank you so much for listening. You can submit your own stories, confessions, questions, and more at croghunk.com or by calling in at 312 725 6483. You can also check out the Am I the Asshole subreddit to post something on there. I just have it reserved just in case. It hasn't popped off yet, but I have faith that one day it'll pop off. But also I kind of hate Reddit, so I'm also fine if it doesn't pop off because Reddit is a cesspool. (laughs) That being said, thank you all for listening. I look forward to reading your questions next month. Bye. Bye guys. Hey everybody, not to hop on as like a post credit scene, but I also do now own poisontouch.com so you can submit your questions to either krogunk.com or to poisontouch.com they both direct to the same website so you know a little easier to remember see you next time